Let's take a look at how the Navy wants to retire the EA-18G Growler and how the Air Force may end up operating it. In a move that has surprised many, the Navy has proposed shutting down all five non-carrier-based expeditionary electronic attack squadrons as part of its 2023 fiscal year budget request. If enacted, the 25 EA-18G Growlers assigned to those units would be sent to the Boneyard in Tuscan, Arizona and put into long-term storage. Additionally, the proposal would see just over 1,000 officers and enlisted personnel from the five squadrons cut or transferred as a result of inactivating the Growlers. Today, we will take a look at why this is a bad idea, how the Air Force and Navy Reserve could keep the Growler flying, what future replacements there may be for the Growler, and how the EA-18G could have been used in a summer blockbuster movie you may have seen. The idea that the Growler should be retired is, to say the least, surprising, as the Growlers actually seen increased demands from mission commanders and planners lately. In perhaps the most prominent example of demand for the EA-18Gs, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine this February, six Growlers from the VAQ-134 Garuda squadron were rapidly deployed to Spangalum Air Base in Germany to bolster readiness and augment NATO's defensive position. This scenario perfectly demonstrates the expeditionary E-18G Growler Squadron's ability not only to protect carrier strike groups, but also to rapidly deploy anywhere in the world and provide Allied commanders enhanced protection in all potential phases of operations. Having Growlers in theater is simply a game changer for Allied forces. Another case in point for the Growler's usefulness. When the USS Carl Vinson CVN-70 departed on its first ever Indo-Pacific deployment with F-35Cs, it took an additional two Growlers to bring the carrier's total complement up to seven aircraft. These additional Growlers were part of the carrier's plus up air wing for this seminal deployment featuring Navy F-35Cs and speaks to how highly valued the other version of the Super Hornet is on a cruise. In fact, operationally, the F-35Cs and Growlers seem to complement each other. While the F-35C has advanced sensors, the Growler is able to project electronic warfare jamming over a wider area. More on that later. So why does the Navy want to shut down this proven and vital asset? Apparently, like most things, it comes down to money. Inactivating the 25 Growlers and associated personnel would free up over $800 million in funds that could be used elsewhere. Is this a good idea? I don't think so, and apparently neither does the Senate or the Air Force. Today, the Senate is actually proposing a bill that calls for the retention of the EA-18G aircraft and to transfer the Growlers assigned to the Expeditionary Electronic Attack Squadrons to the Navy Reserve or the Air Force. The proposed bill goes on to further designate one or more units from the Air National Guard or Air Force Reserve to join with the Navy Reserve and establish a Joint Service Expeditionary Land-Based Electronic Attack Force and then produce a report on the plan of the Secretaries of the Navy and Air Force on how this proposal would be implemented. This bill, if enacted, would prevent the Growlers from being decommissioned and likely keep most, if not all, of the crews on active duty. Given the Growlers' proven usefulness, this is a win-win situation. But why is the Air Force interested in the EA-18G? To understand the Air Force's need for Growlers, we need to take a look at the USAF's dedicated tactical electronic warfare platforms. Essentially, since the retirement of the EF-111B Raven in 1998, the Air Force has been without a fast fighter-sized airframe that was purpose-built for the vital electronic warfare role. As a result, expeditionary EW missions fell to the Navy and Marine Corps' EA-6B Prowler. However, the Prowler was retired in 2019, which left just the Navy's EA-18G Growler as the only fast jet dedicated EW aircraft for the U.S. military. Because of this, the Air Force has actually been training operational crews with Navy Growlers since 2011. Known as the Joint Airborne Electronic Attack Program, the Air Force has stationed the 390th Electronic Combat Squadron at Naval Air Station Whidbey Island in Washington State, which is the home base for the Navy's Growler units. Interestingly, the Navy runs an electronic warfare version of Top Gun, which is known as HAVOC, formerly referred to as the Airborne Electronic Attack Weapons School, the Air Force just graduated its first member from HAVOC last year. 
What makes the move to retire the Growlers even more puzzling is that as recently as last year, there were plans to incorporate further upgrades into the Growler, including equipping it with the next generation jamming pods, a system of three integrated pods that provide full spectrum jamming capabilities. More specifically, these updated pods would cover the low, mid, and high bands of signal frequencies. While most threats fall into the mid-band range, the addition of the Next Generation Jamming Low Band, or NGJLB, pod in particular is seen as a critical upgrade to the Growler's capability set. As the currently equipped ANALQ99 Low Band performance has historically suffered from reliability issues. The next generation pods appear to be based on an actively electronically scanned array or ASA technology, which along with being more reliable allow for more precise jamming efforts at further distances. This in turn will allow allied units to engage enemy threats from increased standoff distances, which should thereby increase strike aircraft survivability rates. Additionally, the upgraded pods will allow for an increased number of jamming assignments per aircraft and enhance flexibility of strike operations. Circling back to Growlers complementing F-35s, the new low-band pod is ideally suited to jamming long-range, lower-frequency radars, which are increasingly being used to detect stealthy aircraft. By jamming or disrupting these long-range radars, the Growlers provide enhanced support for the Lightnings. In a typical scenario, F-35s and F-22s would use their onboard ASA radars to perform penetrating escort jamming, or jamming within range of ground defenses as they proceed to their target. Meanwhile, the Growler would perform modified escort jamming at a distance outside the engagement zone of ground defenses while covering a large area for the strike group. In this way, the Growler would blind long-range radar as the Raptors and Lightnings approached, while the F-35's tactical electronic warfare suite would deal with high-frequency radars en route to the target. Naturally, the Growlers could also provide protection to their Super Hornet cousins as well. And finally, Growlers can also work together with specialized jammer drones which can distribute their electronic warfare systems over a much larger area. In this way, a single Growler could act as an EW node, reducing the number of aircrews placed at risk that would normally be needed to cover greater engagement zones. There is even some speculation that Growlers equipped with these next generation pods could initiate cyber attacks on air defense systems, causing them to shut down completely prior to a strike. Using these advanced pods could also allow Growlers to direct high-powered bursts of microwave energy to destroy enemy emitters. And lastly, Growlers could also be used to spoof the radar signature of another aircraft onto a drone, causing defensive systems to engage and expend valuable missiles on a relatively inexpensive and unmanned attritable drone. What about other airframes that could fulfill the Growlers' role, especially for the Air Force? There actually has been talk about providing some electronic warfare pods to the Air Force's new F-15EXs or Eagle IIs. Since it appears that most Eagle IIs will be assigned to National Guard units and would fulfill the Senate requirement for Guard-based electronic warfare aircraft. However, the Eagle II is not intended as an electronic warfare platform and with only 80 airframes ordered, at best this would be an add-on capability and not a replacement for the highly specialized EA-18G. As far as the F-35 is concerned, the Lightning is continuously being upgraded and no doubt will increase its electronic warfare capabilities as the platform matures. However, the Growler is available today and has already demonstrated that it can rapidly deploy anywhere in the world and the F-35 likely needs more time to mature into the dedicated EW role. Additionally, we can't overlook crew training. Electronic warfare and all of its associated components is a highly specialized art which requires constant training and expertise, as systems are evolving continuously. The Growler is purpose-built and its crews are trained from day one in the art and science that is tactical electronic warfare. Today, the single most powerful military force in the world is a U.S. Navy carrier strike group, which is capable of power projection and performing many missions, such as strike, maritime security, and air superiority. Because of its prominent role on the world stage, adversaries are continuously looking for ways to disable or deter a carrier. As a result, a carrier is always escorted by ships designed to protect it, from destroyers to cruisers and the occasional submarines. All of these units work in conjunction with each other to form a defensive network to protect the carrier. Key to this defensive network is the EA-18G Growler. The Growler not only provides defensive and reconnaissance data to the carrier strike group, 
It also provides escort jamming to strike aircraft to and from a target. In many ways, the Growler is at the tip of the spear and the defender of the fleet, while also being able to provide its own offensive capabilities. Built on the combat-proven Super Hornet airframe, the Growler continues to punch above its weight class and demonstrates that it's an asset which can be made available to Allied commanders anywhere in the world at any time. Despite the growing numbers of F-35As, Bs, and Cs entering service, the EA-18G Growler still very much has a place in today's battle space. To borrow an expression from a recent summer blockbuster film, is the Growler heading into retirement? Maybe so, but not today. And since we're talking about a summer blockbuster featuring Super Hornets, we can imagine how much smoother that trench run would have gone if a Growler had been used to jam and disable enemy air defenses. What do you think? Should the Growler be retired? Could you get used to a Growler in Air Force colors? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'd like to give a quick shout out to my patrons and channel members. If you enjoy this content and want to support this channel, I'll leave links below. Now you know!